Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the Tag Heuer Grand Carrera, a phenomenal watch with a very innovative caliper reading scale to help measure down to a tenth of a second. As I said, today we're gonna to be talking about the Tag Heuer Grand Carrera. This does have the Grand Carrera, the uh, caliber 36 movement. It is a modified El Primero movement, but we're gonna get into that a little bit later. I wanna talk about some of the basics of the watch to give you a good idea, a good basis of what this watch is about. So these watches do come in a 43 millimeter size and they do have a screw down crown, giving us a water resistance rating of 100 meters. Again, that's not gonna mean you should swim down 100 meters below the surface with this watch. That is rated for surface play getting thrown in the pool uh, jumping diving in waves or you know swimming in a swimming pool but not necessarily something that we would want to wear if we were going to be scuba diving actually beneath the surface for any extended period period of time. Now, this is a, a watch. Both of these do come with an exhibition case back. One of my favorite features of this watch, or pretty much any watch that allows you to see into the movement and see exactly what's going on mechanically with these watches. Now, you'll notice there's a, an obvious difference here. We've got a stainless steel version and this one that's a, a, got a black coating on it. This is actually a PVD coated titanium, but you are able to get either variation of this with this watch. You can get it in the PVD coated titanium or the stainless steel, and they both come with different options regarding the strap, bracelet, band, whatever you really want to call it. The stainless steel one comes with, um, you can get it with the stainless steel bracelet to complement the watch, or you can get it with the rubber strap, whereas the PVD coated titanium, you can get it with the rubber strap or the leather strap. The one that we have here today is one of the rubber straps, but do know that you can get these in any, with any of those variations or combinations thereof. And I'd like to actually dig into that a little bit more, because this is one thing that is really common in the secondary market. Many times you'll find a watch, and this is not just with a tag, this could be a Rolex, a Breitling, a Cartier, or a Panerai. So many of the watches come with the ability to swap between a bracelet and a strap. Now, this watch retails around $10,000, depending on which configuration you're going for. And when you're buying it on the secondary market, like from Swiss Watch Expo, you're able to save thousands of dollars on the cost of the watch. So if what you really want is this watch, but with a, um, one of the rubber straps, what you need to do is buy this watch and then just go buy one of the rubber straps. If you're looking for this one in a leather, you just go get the strap. You're saving thousands of dollars and you can do this with any of the brands. But at the end of the day, you're gonna be able to get the watch that you want with the strap that you desire to the length that you need all under the price that you would get if you were to buy the watch brand new from the authorized dealer. Now, let's dig into a little more of the functionality of this watch. So one of the things that I was talking about this is a PVD coated titanium. What does that mean? We hear this, this acronym PVD thrown around all the time. It actually stands for physical vapor deposition. And what they do is they, they vaporize this coating in a vacuum and then deposit it onto the case itself. It's much more innovative and technologically advanced than simply painting a titanium case black. Now, I want to dig into the internals of this watch because it does have some really fascinating features and some very user friendly, um, you know, uh, options and ways to use the watch that are very relatable and something that you would actually use and functionality in the world, real, real time, something that you know, a watch that you can actually use. Now, and the movement inside of this watch is a modified Zenith El Primero movement. So it's got a 36,000 beats per hour is going to be the, uh, the rate of the watch. It does have 31 joules in it, and it boasts approximately a 50-hour power reserve. So plenty of time. You know, of course, it is an automatic movement. So if you're wearing the watch consistently or keeping it on watch winder, we can obviously extend that 50-hour power reserve. And always keep in mind that if you leave the chronograph engaged, it is going to be reducing that power reserve because more is going on in the watch. 
Now, since it's a chronograph, obviously it has your standard pushers, right? You've got your stop, stop, start pusher up here at what would be two o'clock and then the reset pusher down here at four. Now, one of the things that I really like about how TAG designed this watch, it doesn't have your standard chrono pushers. These are, I like to call them paddle pushers. It reminds me of like paddle shifters in a car. It really bodes well towards the air of sportiness that TAG Heuer is um, kind of personifying in these watches and uh, especially in the Carrera line. We've done some other videos. If you want to actually get a history of where the Carrera comes from and what that historical relevance has with the company, you also find it in Porsche. But we did a video on it. You can come check it out on our YouTube channel. It's got a great description, the history of where the, and how the name of this watch and collection came into being. But the, the point of it, the gist of it is these watches are designed with racing in mind. And with racing, it's, it doesn't come down to the second. It doesn't come down to the minute or the hour. It comes down to a fraction of a second, you know, just a very small change in time. And this watch actually allows us to measure to a tenth of a second. And the way that it does that is we're, whenever we engage the chronograph, obviously we see the chrono seconds. And one quick thing, everything that has to do with the chronograph on this, um, on this dial is going to be accented with yellow or red. So you'll notice the, the chronograph seconds is yellow here. It's got a red tip on the stainless steel version. And then where we've got the 30 minute counter at three o'clock and the 12 hour counter at six o'clock. Both of those have little, not, not necessarily a hand, but an indicator on the outside of that sub dial that matches that same accent. So when you're looking at your watch, you can remember if you're looking at an accented piece, you're going to be re reviewing or viewing some element that has to do with the chronograph. Whereas the standard hours, minutes, and then we've got our constant running seconds here at this linear window at nine, they do not have these same accents on them with the exception of that running seconds hand. This is another innovative creation by Tag Heuer. Normally when we see a running second hand, it's going to be a full 360 degree dial where we just watch the second hand go around and around and around. This one's a little different. It's a vertical slit that's a viewing window. Um, inside of it is going to have three hands. So you think of a you know, like a pizza that's been cut into three equal portions. And what happens is each one of those is going to be separated by 120 degrees, giving us three of them in a 360 degree circle. Well, one of them does have that accent, that yellow accent. And all three of those hands rotate clockwise, but only one of them is really going to be used on the scale. And you'll notice that at the bottom of this nine o'clock scale, there is a, a small yellow indicator. And then at the top and in between, you'll notice a bunch of white ones or a, a different color that you can use to read the moving seconds. Now, inside this viewing window, there are those three hands that are rotating. At any given time, you'll either see one of them or for a brief moment, you'll see two. And what you do to read the seconds is the yellow one indicates when we're at second zero. And as it reaches zero, it's gonna be at the bottom of the viewing window. And as we approach the 20 second mark, that yellow hand is gonna be slowly moving up towards the top of that viewing window. The moment that that yellow hand reaches the 20 second mark, you'll notice the second hand has now hit the yellow mark at the bottom, indicating we're at 20 seconds and now counting to 40. So just a brief little tutorial on how to view the running seconds pane or viewing window on this um on this watch now my favorite feature the one that allows us to measure down to a tenth of a second is actually going to be using this the second element very similar to a crown up at 10 o'clock it's where we normally find like the helium escape valve on you know a diving watch but this is a racing watch this is not a helium escape valve it actually it allows us to rotate this inner bezel that is associated with the caliper scale that gives us that reading to a tenth of the second. And the way that it works is we engage the chronograph and say we're, we're doing a lap around the track or you're trying to see how quickly you can, you know, caramelize an apple or you name it, whatever you're doing, you get to the, the, to the end of what you're timing, you press the, the top pusher to stop your chronograph. And then what we do is we use our 10 o'clock rotation device to 
line up this caliper on the outside of, or rather the inner bezel, but on the outside of the dial. And you'll notice that it does have that same accent. So on the stainless steel version, if it's got red, it's gonna be a little red arrow. On this um, titanium version, it's gonna be in yellow. And what we do is we line it up to where the chronograph second is where the yellow or red arrow is, lined up exactly. Now on the actual scale, you'll notice that following that zero, there is another 10 integers. It goes from one all the way back up to zero. And the way that you read this, because let's be honest, if you're trying to read a 10th of a second, right? And there are 60 seconds on this dial. So you can tell exactly how many minutes, how many hours and how many seconds. But if you want to know, you know, what 10th of a second, like, what are you going to do? Grab your jeweler's loop and try to guesstimate like, well, that looks like it's four tenths of the way to the next second. You're not going to get a very accurate reading. So TAG has designed this caliper scale to allow for that measurement to be taken quickly and accurately. The way that it works is when you line up the inner rotating bezel with the chronograph second, the following 10 integers are not evenly spaced at one second. And so when you're looking at the watch, you're actually going to look at this scale and you're going to find which one most accurately lines up with any of the next 10 seconds. And so for instance, on this one, it's coming in at three. So it might be a little difficult to see here. I don't know if we're gonna be able to zoom in far enough, but if you look at integers one through nine, including the final zero or what would be 10, all of them are slightly off. But if you zoom in on where the three is, it actually lines up perfectly. So when we're doing our calculation, we've got five, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18.3 seconds was how long I had this chronograph engaged. So it's definitely a very versatile watch. It's very functional in the sense of calculating time. It is very sporty. It's very resilient. Come check them out at SwissWatchExpo.com. And if you have any questions about this watch or any of our other watches, definitely leave us some comments, ask for some feedback, and we'd be happy to provide.